Hey, this is Lance from LangChain. Over the past few months, we've seen more and more AI applications that use voice as the input. So one great example for this is what Hamil Hussein laid out in his recent blog post talking about voice to content pipelines. So how can I basically go from a voice recording of what I want to write to a final finished product? I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch today, and I'm going to apply it to something that we do all the time at LangChain, which is blog writing. Blog writing is challenging. The cold start problem in particular is, is, is very uh, tedious with blog writing. So how do I go from kind of a, some thoughts in my head to a first high quality working draft of the overall blog post? So this pipeline we put together called RoboBlogger is our first cut at doing this using an integrated voice and kind of AI agent automation pipeline all together. So the flow is basically going to be this as a user I'm going to use a voice to text app to create a transcript of what I want to write a blog about. This is like a stream of consciousness. Now the assistant will take that transcript along with optionally a general structure of the blog I want to write and optionally some links to use and it'll produce a high quality blog post. We're going to build that all from scratch here very shortly, but first I'm going to show you how it's kind of all working end to end. So if you follow the quick start in the repo, you'll see this open up in your browser. This is LangGraph Studio. This is a very nice and easy way to interact with our assistant here called RoboBlogger. So all I need to provide is one input. That input is just the name of the audio to text transcript that I created. Now I'm going to show you how to create that here next, but first I just want to show how once I have that file, I can actually run this assistant. I provide the name. I also provide any URLs if I want to include those in the blog writing. So for us, these URLs are typically documentation that's linked to whatever I'm writing a blog about. So usually to be like, okay, here's a new feature. Here's a stream of consciousness about what I want to write about. That's what's captured in this transcript. Then it's, here's the documentation. So here's like a few new pages of documentation we have. And those are the inputs that I want to pass to my assistant. Now, if I open up this configuration tab, right here, I can actually specify the structure of the blog post I want. I'll talk about this a lot more in the future, but the main intuition here is we tend to have different styles of blog posts. So I want to make it really easy to customize the overall flow of the blog. Like some blog posts are more case studies that may have structure one. Other blog posts are like new releases that might have structure two. So here's an example of a structure I want. I want executive summary, product context. This is more like a product update blog. So it's going to have the announcement, details, closing. So first, my assistant generates a plan. Then in parallel, it writes the sections of the blog. So here's the final blog. It's a markdown. And this is everything I want. I can copy this over just to a file in, in the uh, repo. So if I go to the repo, examples, this is a product update style blog post. Here's the markdown. You can see here it is. So this is actually a pretty nice write-up. Um, on everything that I wanted, talking about, in this case, LangGraph Cloud. It gives some product context. It lays out the core features pretty nicely, lays out some implementation details, and a conclusion with relevant notes. So not bad. This would be a really nice V1 of my blog post from a really simple kind of audio readout of my thoughts, as well as a few URLs, and boom, there we go. Now let's walk through some of these components in a little bit more detail. First is the dictation. So I didn't show anything about how I did that, but I want to talk about that right now. So if you go to Hamel's blog, he mentioned a few different tools that he uses for dictation. So some of these are for mobile, some are for, for example, laptop or your, your desktop. And this Flow app is one that he mentioned. It's called Flow, flowvoice.ai. And I tried this and it works really nicely. So let's show an example of using this uh, dictation app in cursor. So right now I'm in cursor, I'm in the repo, and I go to the source agent directory, open up that notes subdirectory, and you can just create a text file, call it notes.txt, right? Now, if I've downloaded the app Flow Voice, I can do two things. One is I just hit function, or I can go and click this little button that's on my desktop, enable dictation, and I can just speak. So right now I can dictate the blog post I want to write about. 
So I want to write a blog post about LangGraph Cloud. LangGraph Cloud is a really nice way to deploy LangGraph agents. It has a few different features that are advantageous, like double texting, support for streaming, long and short term memory. Start with a, a layout of what LangGraph is and its motivations, then talk a little bit about um, some challenges with productionization. Cool. So I finished that. I just hit stop. There we go. So it's transcribed everything I just said. And I found this to be pretty good. So, you know, you can test this yourself as you'd like. And there's certainly other apps to use to capture dictations. But the point is, it's pretty easy. Get an app that allows you to go voice to text. And I have this notes directory in the repo. And you can just dump your audio transcriptions to different files. So here's some other transcriptions that I did. In some of these cases, I just add some spaces to break it out so I can actually look at the description. I might modify it a little bit before I go to the writing phase. But you can see it's a really nice way to get started. Just kind of stream of consciousness dump of what you want to write about and just save that to a file. So now we've shown how to create this transcript right here, going from the user to a transcript. Let's actually build this from scratch. So I'm in a fresh notebook here. Now let's actually start building this piece by piece. So we have our transcript, we just created that. Now I wanna build this planning piece. And actually this is the thing I found to be most important. If you build this planner correctly, the downstream writing is pretty straightforward. So actually there's at least two benefits to building this kind of separate planning step. One is it increases the quality, allows for parallelization. For example, you can plan out the sections of your blog, write them all in parallel, so that's good. But also you can debug it independently. So you can look at the planned sections of your blog and see whether or not they're correct. And if they're not, you can modify the prompts and you can do other things. So let's just build this first. So we're gonna build this as in LangGraph. LangGraph only needs simple functions to specify the different steps or nodes in the graph. So this is basically the first step in the assistant. It is gonna be generate blog plan. So that's basically this phase. So what's really going on here is, I'm gonna make a call to an LLM. In this case, I'm gonna use Claude 3.5 with a specified structured output. Now this structured output is going to be this section schema. So what is that? If you go up and look, so I pulled all the schemas into this notebook so we can actually look at them really easily. So really all you're gonna see is that I define a schema, it's a pedantic model, for one section of the blog. It's gonna have a name, a description, content, and whether or not it's a main body. That's a Boolean, so true or false. We'll see why it's useful later. And this is just a list of sections. So it's going to output my blog as a structured object of sections to start. And I'm going to pass in my system prompt. This is really the crux of it because this I'm going to pass two things, the user instructions from my transcription and a customizable blog structure. So here's the prompt I'm going to use blog planner instructions. So I'm basically going to say, look, you're an expert technical writer helping to plan a blog post. Your goal is to generate a concise outline. Carefully reflect on these notes from the user. This is my transcription. Next, structure these notes into a set of sections that follow this structure exactly. This is the key point. So I have the kind of unstructured audio transcription from the user, and I have a blog structure outline that I provide. And then this is just telling it to return a structured output that adheres to my schema. So let's test out just this planning phase in isolation to see how it works. So here I'm gonna provide some blog structure that I want. We talked about this a little bit previously. This is just like kind of a general summary of how I want the blog to go. Then I just provide the name of the transcript. So this is whatever file you created. In this case, I have a transcript that talks about LangGraph Cloud in detail. I pass that here. I'll specify these URLs here. They won't be used quite yet in the planning phase, but I'll use them later. So I just want to have them enumerated right here as a potential input for later. Run it. And we're just going to print out the output of each section. And we can see, here's the sections of my blog. Executive summary, brief context about LangGraph, introduce LangGraph Cloud, blah, blah, blah. Historical context, problem it solves, why LangGraph Cloud's a great update, LangGraph Cloud features, how we actually get started with it, closing. So this is perfect. What's happening here? It's looking at my transcript file. That's giving it all the meat of what I want to talk about, the LangGraph Cloud stuff, but it's structuring it in a way 
that follows this general format of a blog that I want to write. Summary, context, core announcement, implementation, closing. So this is really nice and it outputs a structured object per my schema, which I talked about above, right here as a set of sections that all have these attributes. So what's cool here is I can look at the plan and I can say, okay, I like this, this is good. Now this is very useful when you're debugging. In practice, it'll all run end to end, but it's really nice to be able to run this piece just in isolation and inspect. So now I've added code for the rest of the graph and I've compiled it and view it. We'll walk through each of these in detail, but I just wanna show the whole thing here. So we just talked about generate the block plan up front. That's really the most important thing to understand because once you have a blog plan, everything else is just parallelized section writing. So it's pretty simple from here on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write all the main body sections of our blog. And then we're going to write any final sections like introduction conclusion, which will tie together everything we've written in the main body. The reason I do this in two phases, I found that it results in better quality. So if I write the intro and conclusion last, it can actually reference everything else been, that's been written initially. So it adds a little bit of latency because I basically do it sequentially, but it definitely improves quality. So I like to do it this way. So this is how the graph is laid out in terms of the flow. I start, I generate the blog plan. We just talked about that. Then I go to this initiate section writing. So this is actually a conditional edge. And what's gonna happen here is it uses LangGraph send API to parallelize the writing of all sections that are main body as identified in our section schema. So remember, when we create the plan, some sections are identified as main body sections, and those are written first. So all that happens is I iterate through those sections that I created in the planning phase, and I go ahead and use this send API to kick off writing phase in parallel on all main body sections. And I just pass in the input required for that write section node. Now here's really the main thing to understand about section writing. We're gonna take in the user's transcription because that gives them kind of a nice overview of what the story is from the user. And I wanna retain that when I'm writing each section. And I'm also gonna load any URLs that the user provides. This is very helpful to ground the writing of you know, the details of any sections. I just pass in all that information to my writer prompt. And I add that up here at the top of the notebook. So again, you're an extra technical writer. Here is the user, user instructions about the overall blog post. You have the context and the whole story. Here's a section name. This comes from our section schema. Here's a section topic, again, from the section schema. Here's any URLs optionally passed to help you flesh out the details of this section. And then I should give some simple writing guidelines. That's it, pretty simple. So I'm gonna write the section and I'm just going to add that to the completed sections key in our state. And I follow a very similar flow to write the final sections. The only difference is in that writing final sections, the prompt takes in the main body sections all collected together as one of its inputs. And this is important because in the final sections, I wanna reference everything else I've written to make sure it kind of either introduces or concludes everything really nicely. That's really the only difference. And you can look at that prompt, you can see it's really similar to what we just talked about. The only difference is here's the main body sections you're going to reference. That's really it. And that's really all there is to it. We have this final little compile final blog post, which just takes all the completed sections together and just stitches them into a single string and returns it as final blog. That's really it. Now we've seen how to build this from scratch. Let me just walk through the quick start here really quickly. So all you're gonna do is just make sure Anthropic API key set, and then you're gonna clone the repo, cd in, and then just run this command. So I'm gonna fresh terminal, I've cloned the repo, I've cd'd in, there we go. And I just run that command provided in the readme. Now this is gonna spin up a local LangGraph server that will allow us to run our assistant. And it's gonna open, you can see here, LangGraph Studio in the browser. Give it a second, there it is, very nice. Now this is what I showed back at the beginning. So now we kind of see full circle here. This is the same thing we looked at in the notebook, but now this is all running for me in my local LangGraph deployment. Now I wanna show practically how I use this. 
So if you open up this Assistance tab, this allows you to save different types of blog post structures. So open up Perspective. Go to the Assistant. This just allows me to save in the configuration this particular type of blog post. So this is like a perspective post, which is more of like an editorial piece. There's also another assistant for product updates. So again, the structure here is a little bit different. But what's cool is I can save these locally in Studio as different assistants that I can just really easily run with different inputs. So I can pick whatever one I want. Let's say I want to write a product update blog post. Boom. So now I'm in that particular assistant. That configuration is set now. You can again see it right here. Cool. That's the block structure I want to do. And again, just like we saw previously, I just provide the name of the transcribed notes file. And again, that file is specified in the repo. So if I go to source agent, I go open that notes directory. I've created three. You can create as many as you want. It'll automatically look in the subdirectory for files to just provide a name. And for example, let's try agents.txt in my case. This is a blog post I want to write about, uh, for example, agents and what they are. So this is going to be a perspective blog. So let's open that one up. This is my perspective assistant. Again, the configuration is a little bit different for this type of blog. Provide the file name and just paste in any URLs that are related to agents that I want to include in the blog post. Again, the configuration is already set and I run it and it's done. I have a nice blog post here. You can see this final blog key as a nice little markdown file that talks all about agents. And again, I added this to the repo in examples, perspective, agents.markdown. We can see here is the whole blog post. Pretty nice. So just to recap, the main idea here is building an audio or voice to content pipeline for a challenging writing task, for example, blog writing. Now this general pipeline is extremely customizable. For example, all of the prompts are just listed in the repo under prompts.py. Change them any way you want. That's completely customizable. Also, this report structure, blog structure, entirely customizable. You can modify that any way you want. And whatever links you want to use or don't want to use, also entirely up to you. So, and again, this voice of text pipeline, I tried that Flow Voice app, try other ones. All you need to provide this assistant is just a transcript of your audio recording. So overall, this is kind of a nice example of all these pieces working together, kind of a voice of text component with some optional um, sources from the user like web pages or like a structure. Then it's using an LM with structured outputs to create a plan. And then it's using parallelization to write every section of the blog guided by this plan, which is itself guided by the transcript from the user, as well as any optional sources. So it's a very general, nice kind of voice to content flow that we're going to be using more and more to write blog posts, but again, can be generalized to really any type of writing, and definitely something that you should explore if you're interested. So thanks, and feel free to leave any questions or comments below.